Marisa Lassa. I'm here in Greenpoint in a studio of my great artist friend, Lucky. He's an amazing street artist. He's recently also gotten into mural painting, canvas painting, and also into 3D printing. And we're about to do an interview with him through Artlet. I'm so excited for you guys to hear what he has to say about his background, about his street art, and about the whole scene. So stay tuned. I'm here with artist Lucky in his studio in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Uh, we are doing an interview through Artlets. And how are you today? I'm good. Yeah. It's uh, 2021. Made it through last year. Right. <laughs> it's hectic <laughs> as fuck. It was a little bit difficult, right? <laughs> yeah. All the quarantining and everything. Did you spend yeah, time in all New good. York? Or? Stayed here in New York. The whole time? In March of last year. It was interesting finding out all this information mm -hmm. and just writing it out while right. a lot of people fled back to to, where they to wherever they felt comfortable <laughs> for a second yeah. but it wrote it out and it's not as bad as yeah it's not that bad i mean it wasn't that bad i don't see it i thought it would be i thought it was going to be worse but it seems like a flu to me yeah did you, yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, did you uh, create a lot of things while you were, like, a lot of art while you were in quarantine? Or? A lot of, yeah, like, digital work. Yeah. Working, creating, sitting down and having time to continue the projects I was working on. Mm -hmm. Kind of complete most of them. Okay. Starting a toy that should be out. In like eight months from now, yeah, which will be fun. Yeah, very cool. We will we will talk about <laughs> that for sure. So now, um, let's start from the beginning. Where are you originally from? Originally, and how did you grow up? Born in Miami. Mm -hmm. Lived on a big yard because my dad. Uh, I guess my dad was uh like close with Pablo Escobar and uh, oh, he was close with Pablo Escobar. Yeah, he's Ecuadorian. Famous friends. <laughs> oh, your and, dad's uh, Ecuadorian. Yeah. Okay. So, so you mix of interesting with him. He wasn't really in our lives too much, okay. but our neighbor was from Hong Kong and they had like five acres and a zoo of exotic animals. Okay. So I was really close with like being outside around nature a lot. Mm -hmm. And even through my art now, like a lot of it's like trying to spread a message about sustainability and the environment mm -hmm. being on the side of not so much consuming or mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know, capitalism, like more like yeah, awareness like towards moving away from revolution and, and, and yeah. more on what's really important in life. Yeah, like and the environment right needs. now. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping us alive out here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so a little um, trippy. <laughs> yeah, so you're so you basically grew up, grew up around animals. Yeah. Animal Farm, you said moved you have... to even lived in South America. Okay, for how long? Always uh, out in out in nature a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess till seven years old. Till moved to New York when I was ten. Okay, and uh, with your family or with, with my family? With your family? Yeah, okay. I think my sister was biking from like Miami all the way to Canada with uh, some wow. group, and she like pushed us to move to New York City because she had a friend that she was. Okay. They're like good friends with and she was like oh yeah she was she's eight years older than me so she was like oh we want to i want to move to new york city okay we have family here so we moved out so you here and your sister moved to new york city yeah like our whole family our whole family moved oh, really? i Everyone? i went to elementary school yeah <laughs> out in long island okay and then i moved to new york here like i guess when i was 18 after graduating high school okay yeah. And then is that when you started doing arts or? I've been doing art since fourth, like first grade. Okay. And in Florida, mm -hmm. the school that I went to in Long Island, though, wasn't as art directed. So I kind of got lost for a second, rebelled, sold drugs, selling weed, 
Right. I don't consider weed a drug, but yeah. back in 2009 and it 2006, was, it was, it was yeah. very illegal or more illegal. So I was like yeah. selling this. Now it's so different and everything's like calm down around I it. mean, it's practically getting legalized in a lot of states now, right? So yeah, that's it's good. Yeah. Yes, you got in trouble for selling weed. Selling weed and uh, Bad boy. going to rehab, meeting other artists, tattoo artists. I guess yeah. uh, there's like um, some t-shirt company artists and sitting in rehab with these guys that were 35 years old doing their doing their life when I was 20 or 18. Yeah. And picking up like on what they do and talking to like different people in different industries, but artists. So you went helped to, me out. you got in trouble with the law about selling weed. Did yeah. you go to jail for it, or did you? I was in and out of court for yeah, like in and out of court. three or okay. four years, and like never... <laughs> constantly. Oh really? Three yeah. Four years. Okay. Yeah, they like prolonged it, and it was just mm -hmm. like rehab like it was like probation and then failing a probation test okay. it led me to go to rehab and meeting like uh, okay. artists that were 15 20 years older than me okay and when i was like i guess i had a black book with my graffiti in it and they were like oh this guy's from new york and it's graffiti yeah. so they weren't i guess they were like they like we were able to pass their knowledge on to me and right. see me as like this young kid mm -hmm. So they were sort of mentoring you yeah. in rehab. And now I'm sitting here doing what I do. And yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, wow. Like this one guy, you'd be like, oh, I work for this company and I make a design for them and they'd pay me a thousand or three thousand dollars, but they sell a hundred units of my t-shirt. Yeah. And now I'm kind of doing the same thing where I'll make something for someone. Yeah. And then they'll go and sell a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, fuck, it's kind of not worth it all the time. Yeah. But now like, because I pick up on a lot of things that I've heard in the past from these people. I'm like, okay, oh, true. Okay, okay. I'm in so this position now. Kind of copying what they were, like yeah. the techniques and stuff, <laughs> just like sale techniques. Yeah. yeah. That's Learning smart. You know, everything happens it. for a reason, I believe. So yeah. that's amazing. So you would say rehab was a good experience for you in that way. Rehab was, Time. yeah, really a good experience in terms of dealing with all that super young. And I don't yeah. believe I really had a problem. So going there and like, yeah being around people that I guess consider themselves to have problems with whatever yeah. they were doing. One guy's in there for weed, but mm -hmm. meeting like other, I guess a lot of creatives were in this rehab in California. Yeah. And yeah, now I'm like fortunate to say that I went there at a young age yeah. and didn't really I develop a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, like I, in a young age yeah. and learned from a lot of creatives as a person right? yeah very very cool and so you started in the street art scene right yeah and how did yeah. that life happen and tell us about mm. that life because that's so interesting you're the first <laughs> artist okay. street artist street artist. artist that we're interviewing so Sick. yeah I, i'm really curious about it so i want to know everything basically and so i went to school I, I mean, I've been doing art, but I went to school at SBA and the teacher at SBA. School of Visual Arts? School of Visual Arts. Midtown or? It's like got to be, Northern yeah, like Midtown, Midtown. maybe around East 30th Street. Like yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or is it West? I'm not sure. I, I don't <laughs> know. I, I figure maybe they have a few buildings. School of Visual Arts, okay. So you went to School of Visual Arts. Here For North. less than a month, the professor okay. was like, you can't really afford it here. I had just moved to New York. Okay. And he was like, you can't really afford it. And I know a lot of artists that are, have gone to the school. And if you want, I think you can just drop out and oh. learn it all on your own. Okay. I don't know if that was the best decision. Okay. <laughs> but here I am now. Right. And I started going to galleries, got okay. involved with a graffiti crew mm -hmm. uptown in Harlem. And, oh, nice. uh, okay. That really brought me into the spray paint world of yeah. things, but my work's more illustrative than uh, yeah, than the graph graph. So I was kind of like, we would go out bombing, yeah, and I'd be spending a lot of time on one piece while we're there, like going down what the street. Bombing? bombing is uh, you all 
go out with spray paint cans and tag up the street or in the middle of the night. do your fills in the middle of the night. Yeah. In secret. <laughs> yeah, in secret. Oh, of course. So that was that's what we were doing, and it's mm -hmm. like adrenaline rush, but you don't yeah. want to get caught by the cops. Okay. So I started making a sticker. Yeah. Because the sticker was way faster, and I could get my name out there faster. Yeah. Without, I guess, it's not as uh, to me, it's not as vandalizing as painting. Right. bombing a huge wall with spray right. paint and i could do it faster and get it up and it could be seen yeah and the whole point is to like be seen and spread your name out there and as fast as possible okay. yeah so i started doing the sticker and getting my name out there this way mm -hmm. doing wheat paste posters i was also doing wheat paste but the wheat paste is like yeah. a big poster putting that out but it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and it's all dependent on the weather. It doesn't yeah. last that long because if right. it rains or it's foggy out, yeah. the moisture with the glue, sometimes it doesn't hold and it'll come down. Yeah. And it's like you spend hours on this piece. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, if it falls down within a week, then it's like, yeah, that's it loses its, yeah. Yeah, it loses its whole kind of like purpose. Yeah, yeah. Purpose, right? um, so are there any, so how long were you with the street art crew? You with me I was with, I mean, I'm still with AWP, always with Pain. I'm still with these guys and built a mob too. Yeah. But the whole graph scene can be, some crews are really big. Like the built a mob crew is in San Francisco. It's in, okay. it's in California. It's like a huge crew and I don't know everybody so in that like crew. A peak. Kind of, yeah, it's a like clique. clique. Some people don't even know each other. They have friends yeah. that are part of this crew. Yeah. And you can get into fights and shit, and then be it's like petty sometimes, or like okay. you don't want to always be dealing with this. So I was writing Built to Mob, but some people, the crew is cool. Like Darks and the homies I know, yeah, we have love for each other. I met him at a before I guess when living in New York City, like working, I was setting up warehouse parties and. Okay. Like after hours events at the Where's door. Brooklyn, uh, yeah, in yeah. Brooklyn and the Lower East Side at like galleries or whatever. Yeah. So I'd be taking their names down at the door. Yeah. And I guess I would draw in the book for people. Like I just draw the people coming in. Oh, so yeah. Dark saw me doing that and he was I guess I had written built to mob or BTM. Yeah. For uh for me it meant something else. I think it was boost the movement. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, why are you writing BTM? And we became friends. Mm -hmm. He was like, uh, I guess my weed dealer too at the time. Oh, <laughs> and, okay. oh, and he was, uh, <laughs> yeah. right. so he was writing darks and he was like, oh, you should write BTM too. Okay. So just like getting into this, but that graph scene, I wanted to paint walls and I had okay. to figure out how to how paint to... bigger murals mm -hmm. and not, uh, so how, how does it work like when you're painting a mural do you have to get permission or it's you should get permission yeah you have to ask a lot of people ask around go to businesses mm -hmm. just like you would with any work i guess email yeah. people or yeah go about it because in new york you see a lot of walls painted right yeah and they're actually it looks like that was done legally because sometimes they do it during the daytime right yeah so how does that work who do you ask like you should it? ask uh you should ask like the business if someone you know yeah honestly i just go and paint it and make it look like uh, i'm supposed to be there okay. and if you can make it look like you're supposed to be there and you don't do it in the yeah. middle of the night yeah you're not gonna people really don't know what's going on and also i feel like <laughs> your art is very beautiful so they're not gonna you know it's very cool and yeah it's yeah. not like just a weird scribble, if, uh, when you're so. starting out with anything though, yeah. like that outline that scribble of course yeah I'm people sometimes they look at it and they, that's like the one part where you might get attention but i'll like yeah. wear an orange vest even when i'm priming the wall or buffing out the wall yeah and i'll just make it look like i'm supposed to be there oh, that's nice. and <laughs> if the cops yeah. do stop me i'll just be like oh I'm going to be here for the next two days or three days. I'm, okay. supposed, I'm painting something. Yeah. This is my building. or yeah. I, I know the building yeah. owner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just like it's pretend like you're supposed to be there. Okay. For a lot of the murals I've painted, it's been like that. If I can, yeah. if I can like talk to somebody, yeah. I will. But 
finding out who owns a building it can be hard or sometimes it's like yeah it depends on the space mm -hmm. but if you can find like a wall where you're not dealing with yeah so, like, dealing with people to ask instead of asking for permission to ask yeah. for forgiveness right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, most people like it yeah. yeah and then you know when they see it then your art is great then then they're cool with it. And when right. you're starting out, though, they might be like, then you might get complaints if they don't know what's going on. Yeah. You'll be like, what is going on in this wall? Yeah. I always yeah. just tell people it's just pain. Like, you mm -hmm. can go over it. Yeah. It's not permanent. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and some people think again. think yeah. it's permanent. Or they say, like, oh, no. Like, yeah. So um, are there any rules in the street art scene that I should know about? There's a we should know about in the graffiti scene. There's yeah. a lot of rules, and that's okay. why Can you elaborate on that. You shouldn't like if somebody writes something. Yeah. You can bomb next to them, or like you want to be up higher because it's called the heavens, and you'll be up higher or something. But okay. you shouldn't tag over somebody because mm -hmm. that's disrespectful. And that's disrespectful. Also, just writing next to somebody if they're in a crew and all their crew members are there, yeah. and you're not part of their crew, they're gonna be like. Who is this mean? guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, unless you know them, yeah. there's just a lot more rules with the graffiti, and that's why I kind of step away from it. Because yeah. in the street art world or like the murals, there's a lot more freedom where it's just art yeah. and it's more public where the graph can be like so beef with like, people. And right, is different. It, so in the street art scene, um, the unwritten rules. That everyone kind of knows about how do you guys know about it though somebody tells you about it or mm. you find out by breaking the rule by accident and then yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's yeah you either break the rule don't know about it you learn about it yeah or somebody else does that for you and then you they tell you like oh you're not supposed to do this yeah yeah like you shouldn't yeah. be taking a lot of people like to take my stickers for example and i mean it's not a rule but i'm like if you yeah. want one, just message me. I'll yeah. send you them. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't be taking them off the sign that I put it up. Like if it's yeah, on the street, yeah. like, I'd rather you sticker. don't take yeah. the sticker, take the wheat paste, or yeah. take the art that's out there on the street because that's yeah. out there. Yeah. But some you people are, like it and they want it and they're like, oh, let me take this. And they yeah. normally don't know. Okay, but I mean, it's better if they came to you and were like, oh, I like this. Can I get it? Yeah. And you know, we, I'll be like, yeah, Definitely. it's better. But I'll go places and I'll be like, oh, I wonder who took that off, yeah. off of this. Or I'll have a friend message and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I took all your shit. And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> why? Yeah. You're like, oh, why'd you yeah. do that? Now I have to go back and make yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. That's annoying. If you're traveling too, I guess, like, yeah. could, you could never end up at that spot again, especially if you're yeah. visiting a foreign place and you're putting out a sticker and somebody mm -hmm. takes it. Yeah. You might never go back there again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So starting from the street art and then transitioning into like mural art and kind of gallery art, right? Because you are slowly gallery art. Yeah. yeah. It's now it's slowly gallery art. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have to build up more work, like okay. more of a body of work. Yeah. I've just been. I like painting outside in the walls. Yeah. And it's more like the field that. I enjoy painting outside, I guess, mm -hmm. the most. Yeah. The indoor work happens, but it's a little slower. I'm okay. getting there to so yeah, the yeah. gallery show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you've been in some shows, right? And you've done some. I, I, I do. To your biography, and you were. You, yeah. There was all kinds of people you were learning from. You said Ni Nikos, for instance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nitros. Nitos? Yeah, he's he's, he's still, Austrian, no? He's Austrian. You? Oh, you're Austrian. I'm Austrian, yeah. Wow, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Nitos, yeah. Nitos is working. I mean, I've seen his work. So it's good. very nice. Uh, very I've, uh, I guess I met him 2014, 2013. Okay. Yeah. And uh, super chill. I met him in San Francisco. Okay. At a, He had a premiere for a movie at the time. Yeah. And uh, just going to his shows and he's super chill right and when he's painting he'll stop and say what's up and his shows are on murals or inside he has he does both he's okay, got both. gallery work so you kind of want to be this, the same way right i'd, I'd like to 
But I'd rather paint walls outside. Outside, okay. Yeah. That's, really That's so fun those for me. are for um, private clients? Or? This is for, I guess this is for a record studio. Okay. They invited us into like Sony Studios and it was closing down. And uh, okay. it was just like this big ass room in the Lower East Side. Okay. Over by like Broadway. Nice. And Bond Street, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess Sony had a music studio and they were closing down. This guy was like, "Oh, if you want to use our space for the summer, yeah, you can." So like, oh, nice. it's like me, Eddie Bogart, and this friend of ours, Crystal. Yeah, and we were just in a Name studio. Sounds familiar, Eddie Bogart. Eddie, like you, you must. He did. I think he just had a show. Yeah, I think Eminem. Yeah, it sounds yeah. Really familiar. You must. You must know yeah. him. He does gallery. He has uh he does more gallery work. Yeah, again, like his name, like even you know, when I, I have a very visual mind, so I see like the writing of his name, like yeah. I, I think I know him. So you still you know, um your Instagram is a lucky rabbit and your tag is also the rabbit, right? Yeah, yeah. So how did that come about? That came about uh, like rabbit, right? Like yeah. that's kind of the character that you're leading with. That's the yeah. character. Yeah, I've been drawing a lot of rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I had four or five rabbits when I was younger. Oh wow. Yeah. Had a lot of animals, like guinea pigs, hamster, turtles, rabbits, you know, so, in Austria. Yeah. Oh what? Yeah. <laughs> Austrian nice rabbits. <laughs> yeah. Super cute. Oh, I know in Europe the rabbits are like out yeah a lot more yeah, than yeah, we uh, had, we had like, like a garden and then we had a stall wild rabbits so, too it was a wild rabbit but they had some freedom you know that they could <laughs> be outside uh, sometimes they would jump the fence though that was a problem <laughs> so yeah we would have to catch them and put them back like, yeah, they jump high they do they yeah if feet. they really want to they can jump really <laughs> really high <laughs> these rabbits uh i got involved with them i guess uh there's Oswald up there, and it's like uh, the first Disney, oh, yeah. <laughs> like before Disney was UBI Works, really. Okay. And uh, he's like uh, creating, before the mouse or Mickey Mouse, it's yeah. Oswald. Mm -hmm. And it's for like, what's it called? For like adults in the yeah. 1915s. Mm -hmm. So Oswald is like running around like an anarchist, messing with the cops. And it's for adult entertainment more as like the new technology or right. played in movies like mm -hmm. so oswald was like had a girlfriend was running around like causing mischief mm -hmm. and i liked that about it yeah. this is before kids really were watching it yeah. so oswald's like a, prior to mickey mouse and he's like this anarchist rabbit mm -hmm. running around i think he's painting too but he's like causing mischief and i like that idea of it yeah and also seeing like the first animation yeah ever where now like animation has gone so far yeah very far very far <laughs> so seeing like this first character yeah i was kind of inspired by that and uh yeah. he started drawing oswald a lot like this i guess i wanted to learn about cartoons so i wanted to study the first ones ever which yeah. was oswald really so i was drawing him a lot and eventually it led to like this world war ii insignia mm -hmm. of a thumper holding a bomb in his hand mm -hmm. and i wanted to change that bomb to a spray paint can okay so that rabbit the rabbit with the spray paint can this guy okay. is uh originally he's got a bomb in his hand and it's on like a plane and okay. it's like for world war ii so instead, uh, I put a spray paint can in his hand. It's very, very, very cute. To when like revolutionize. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll get them. Yeah. We'll do the packaging and it's get them cute. sent out. Yeah. Probably in the next so eight, like a year. I feel like it's going to take a year. A year. To get the packaging, yeah. the boxes, yeah. the color scheme. Okay. And then have it mass produced. Have everything, yeah. Yeah. But that's that's like the rabbit from the tag, right? So this is the rabbit from the tag, yeah. Yeah, so cute. And we're going to also maybe do a Kickstarter, and mm -hmm. it's going to be like 12 inches. It's going to be bigger than that one, and we're going to send it out to 15 artists, and okay. they're each going to paint it. They're each going to do their own version of it. So this is the rabbit. 
Nice. <laughs> right? That's the <laughs> rabbit so thing. Two notifications <laughs> first, but yeah, super cute. Okay, so you're gonna do a Kickstarter for that project, yeah. and yeah, maybe rent a gallery space. Yeah, I'm gonna send them out to like 15 artists that yeah I'm friends with, mm -hmm. and uh, they're all gonna do their own version of it. Oh, super cool! Like toy so creators, you do, like, a whole collaboration. Yeah, that is so cool. So they might yeah. add to it. They might sand it down and do yeah. something else. I don't know what everyone's gonna do. Oh, that's so cool! But I'll send it out to 15 guys. We'll get a spot. Yeah. In the Lower East Side, and we'll have like a Kickstarter show, or maybe I'll just go uh, yeah. to one of these places that's already yeah. set up. Very cool. Very just to cool. get a, a name out there a little and see what other artists want to do with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I love collaborating with yeah, other people. Yeah, I know. It's very nice. <laughs> it's the collaboration shows are amazing. So, in this part of the interview, we're going to talk about the rules of the street art scene and also what it takes to actually make it in street art as well as um, the groups that exist in street art and who my friend Bakri really looks up to. So, um, okay. I am a new graffiti artist. I don't know anything about it, but it's my absolute dream and I would really love to be in the scene. And I would really love to make money as well. Like I will, I want to make it my life. Okay. Profession or something, you know? Yeah. How do I go about that? So when I started after going to like SVA for two weeks and dropping out and him telling me to go to galleries, I went to this place in Williamsburg. I really liked the artwork there. So I was like, if I like this artwork, I'm going to go spend time at this gallery. Yeah. So I went there and I met Sean and Tara McPherson at Cotton Candy Machine. Yeah. And they had like zero friends. And uh, they're like, into, I was into their same contemporary art style. But yeah. he was like telling me I didn't have much work out there. And he was like, it's not that people don't know you exist, but there's a lot of artists that live all over the world and they're not making a living doing it. And their work yeah. can be, they could be the most talented Mm -hmm. But if they're not showing it and it's sitting in their house and they never show it, mm -hmm. then nobody's going to know you exist. Yeah. So you have to get it out there, put it in galleries, ask people, and put it out in public. Because yeah. it's not that people don't want to help you or buy your stuff. It's just they might not even know you exist until mm -hmm. you expose yourself, mm -hmm. go to parties, talk about your work a little, or talk about it and let people know you exist. Okay. And then you have an outlet, but you could be the most talented and no one, if no one knows you exist, yeah. they're not going to know where to buy your stuff and they're not going to even know that you make art unless you're exposing it and putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fun. So you went from street art to murals to sort of gallery spaces or group shows, canvas, group shows yeah. now to basically developing like a toy. Like marketing. Yeah. So yeah, a that's, a good, that's a good thing actually um, that we could talk about. How did you market yourself as an artist? Like what did you primarily use? Did you use a lot of social media or, and what was successful? What were some techniques that you were using that were successful okay. for you? The sticker. The sticker? I mean, putting that out on the street. I think people yeah. are curious to like, oh, what is that? Look it up. And uh, yeah. look it up. Mm -hmm. Instagram is honestly... Has helped, helped a lot. lot. That's where I yeah. do a lot of like, I don't know, it goes down the DMs. There's like work. People will message me through there, and that's where I make most of my income. I'm yeah. working on a website, okay. but I've been fine with just Venmo and website. Cash App and okay. just taking like marketing myself and selling stuff through there. Yeah. Being inspired by stuff. So not over there, I guess downstairs in yeah. the mailroom. Mm -hmm. But I just did something for MF Doom and uh, just doing stuff I'm inspired by or that I love or yeah. that I grew up with mm -hmm. and creating something like this. Yeah. And there's an audience towards that, that yeah, like the same is. stuff I like. Yeah. So just like sticking with things that I know, mm -hmm. like the MF Doom shirts, a lot of people really like that. They're downstairs so, right now, but what are the that MF was like two Doom weeks shirts? ago. So MF Doom was like... Uh, artist rapper that uh a lot of us i guess grew up with he's like underground would wear a mask a lot of okay. uh like a mad villain mask or uh oh cool yeah. like this mask 
and like the underground rapper and kind of like into the graffiti culture too yeah. so maybe that's why but he just passed away in the beginning oh. of this year oh. so there's been like a big uh I'm sorry. A big group of everybody like trying to commemorate him. Okay. And so you do something shirts. for him. So I made these shirts like two weeks ago. Okay. And people were like, oh, that was a really nice tribute or whatever. Yeah. It is. Bought it. And yeah. they're doing stuff that I am inspired by, whatever that is. And yeah. very, very having, nice. I guess, an audience of people just like the graffiti like not everybody is into graffiti but some people don't even understand it yeah. there is a whole community mm -hmm. and culture around it that right. likes it yeah super cool so you're also involved with fashion in a way right like i, I guess so yeah you know, the fashion brands a few fashion brands definitely definitely before. jackets mm -hmm. and uh painting the back of jackets yeah. has been a thing so you put your, some over there. like you design a logo for them and then they print it on their jackets so or how does it work uh i paint right on the jackets right now okay but they'll like they'll like, like come and send it to me yeah so how would you say that somebody become famous in the graffiti world like what's the ultimate level to reach i would say exposure like getting yourself exposed and out there mm -hmm. so having like i don't know if you can't if someone's not paying you to do a wall, do it yourself anyway. And okay. just having that exposure and being out there in the public scene, mm -hmm. like the stickers or anything that's out in the public, okay. is it's hard to get advertisement, but I'd say you make it if you're out there mm -hmm. having sculptures, whatever direction you go into. Yeah. And uh, I, for me, like traveling and painting walls, and okay. getting to this level and if you're not if you're not getting that work done go and do it anyway or create your own create your own path get people together yeah and start your own start your own startup for it yeah because a lot of these older groups of people some of them are already booked or have their artists that they work with mm -hmm. and they'd love to take you on but they've already got their network of people. So you need to build your own network and just do it yourself. And do people in the graffiti world, do they have a manager or like an agent or something like this? I'm noticing a lot of them do. I don't, Yeah. but I'm starting to see like, yeah. maybe once you like been doing it for a while, mm -hmm. you realize like, even for me right now, I'm thinking about getting a manager and getting interns because I'm spending all my days like, placing orders and doing packages yeah. and it takes away from my creativity yeah but i mean like, five or ten years ago yeah. i didn't think i'd be in a position like that but now it's getting to that level where i'm spending all my day just packaging or doing all this sending it's out cool. to the mail and stuff yeah and it's cool but it's yeah. it's like taking away from the creative element yeah i can see that yeah. so but i guess learning just slowly from the bottom yeah and not really I don't know. A manager would be nice. Yeah. And I think a lot of artists do because it can become like such a, there's so many elements to the business yeah. and they want to be creating, you doing do, the creativity. Like the business stuff. You just like, someone else handle yeah, that yeah, <laughs> would be nice. Yeah. You can just be creative. You can be creative. Yeah. Who would you say is the most famous graffiti artist right now? Hmm. Oh, is there like a few or... And yes, there's a few. Yeah. Like Cause is obviously mm -hmm. probably the most famous graffiti artist right now in okay. terms of sculptures and like having his work. Yeah. In cool to me, cool places like in China, he's big, and he's in Europe. He's he's like all over the place. Yeah. I feel like he'd be yeah. considered the biggest, but I mean, Ron English is up there. Yeah. Okay. Nitro is, is up there. Nitro's Tristan good. Eaton is up there. Okay. They're all like in different mm -hmm. bodies of work. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those are the guys that I know, but there's probably tons more that are also doing it. Yeah. Yeah. What would be your ultimate goal for your own life? Do you want to reach their level at some point? I would like to be able to travel and. Yeah. And work in different places. And work in different places and mm -hmm. see different cultures and have friends all over. 
all over the place that are into the same and then probably also half these people all love your art right yeah like you don't really care about fame for being famous for the sake of being famous just that people really like it like you care that about people like it right? and uh i guess also people that are like on the same page of like sustainability and peace and bringing the world's consciousness to like a better place than it is now and yeah. people like that being involved with mm -hmm. people that are changing the world or doing something better yeah eating better yeah doing things healthier lifestyle yeah like helping out more friends less materialistic yeah. yeah this this is i guess the goal is to mm -hmm. be surrounded by people like that yeah. and be impacting the world in a better way that's super cool mm -hmm. and would you think it's more about talent or how much you create the quantity of your work in the graffiti scene or graffiti space i think it's not talent i mean it's more it's quantity not, it's more quantity and just like putting down doing the little stuff and just putting down something yeah and working over talent it's more just like ambition and yeah. putting in the work okay putting in that work because mm -hmm. you can have talent but that is only going to take you so far but having that ambition that drive to wake up every day and do something right a little bit towards your goal mm -hmm. is going to pay off the most yeah yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> you hear that <laughs> Important. Yes. So, in terms of respecting the graffiti world, who gets the most of it? The ones that paint bigger walls or the ones that just like are very rebellious and just tag a lot? I think it, it goes both ways. Like the guys that are painting the bigger walls, I guess I paint walls too, but we're always looking outside at the guys that are painting the graph in the crazy spots where you drive by in a building and you see like a piece up in some weird spot mm -hmm. like flash or somebody like this or you like see it and you're like damn so we're looking at those guys mm -hmm. but they're probably looking at the inside work in the galleries and like yeah looking at that but we're looking at the graffiti on the streets and being like oh like yeah. so mm -hmm. we admire each other okay and so it's so kind it's of like funny <laughs> yeah it goes both ways yeah. we're like the guy in the gallery yeah wants to be doing the stuff in the street and the guy in the street might be wanting to do stuff in the gallery yeah <laughs> Super cool. so it's like going both ways okay <laughs> nice very nice yeah interesting. <laughs> yeah it's an interesting <laughs> question how do people actually make money in the graffiti space is it about like putting your creations on merchandise or do they get into galleries eventually do they get discovered like, you know, how music artists get discovered. Yeah. There's a, for me personally, like I have a job that I just like went and got coffee downstairs and a business opened up and I mm -hmm. said, hi, and they were like, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I paint. And now he's like, oh, can you paint my sign for me? Yeah. So there's always like commercial work or like yeah. work I can do. I'm making pins for a company mm -hmm. right now for a DJ collective. Okay. But there's like this work going on. And then obviously there's people that have their work in a gallery too. Mm -hmm. So there's like more than one stream of income available. Yeah. Right now I'm just booked and like doing these projects. Yeah. But if I want, I can probably go outside and or get work. But the t-shirts and the merch, like my personal merch, mm -hmm. that's like a whole stream of income too. And I, I don't make maybe i'll sell like 15 shirts and have that mm -hmm. but then i have a side project from like painting a sign for somebody's business or okay. the pin side the pins that i'm making so it's like a whole bunch of revenues yeah coming so in it's like you find different yeah. opportunities and then yeah, and like continue the work thing. this way okay or like go out of my way and message somebody and be like oh you're having a festival yeah can i join can i be a part of that yeah Lindala. Super I guess whatever cool. you want to do with it. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Yeah. yeah. So how hmm. much of your time is spent actively seeking out opportunities, um, whether that be via Instagram or other social media outlets or through your personal circles? How much of that do you do? How much time is spent on that? It normally, so like I will go out to a party or something that I'm into yeah. and organically it seems to 
I mean, just happen more naturally. We're all like, go out and my friend will be like, oh, this is an artist. And then this person that I meet will be like, oh, I actually am looking for, they'll see your work and be like, oh, mm -hmm. I actually need something. So more organically, but in the past I was maybe introverted and reaching out, yeah. sitting at home and emailing people. Okay. But Did that and, work? For you? Was it that worked was for commercial jobs like when i was in san francisco i was paint, i was going into like these techie warehouses and mm -hmm. they were like paying me to do something for them mm -hmm. like a sign or something but that commercial work i wasn't i'd rather, much rather be painting my art yeah. for i guess we don't have that much time on this planet and mm -hmm. do you really want to always be working painting someone's yeah. sign or something all the yeah. time so i kind of got bored of it obviously i love helping out in the community and if i can help yeah. somebody's business and do that i love it but painting the murals i feel yeah. like has a purpose and especially mm -hmm. towards like i don't know inspiring another kid or somebody to know yeah. that they can make it as an artist too doing what they love is a nice feeling yeah. which only comes from putting in the work yeah that's super cool <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice that we don't have that much time on this earth so we have to spend it wisely right yeah yeah, yeah. i agree with that a lot actually do more of what you love yeah do more of what you love definitely yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i mean helping i like doing the commercial work but yeah. it takes a lot of time and sometimes it wears you it wears you out and then you yeah. have no time to do what you want to invest your life into if you're spreading yourself too thin yeah yeah, yeah. so true to like divide your attention and your efforts in the right place yeah. as well like i'll also set up events on the side or mm -hmm. do like the met gala or go to these events and do this work because it gets me out of my space mm -hmm. and i like seeing what else is going on yeah and meeting other creative people yeah and going out and doing these other like these other art type of jobs cursing mm -hmm. people and it might not be painting or doing this cool. work but yeah you're around all these other creatives setting up mm -hmm. trees or installing something with yeah. a drill and you're it's, it's cool to meet people yeah. <laughs> yeah i love it as well yeah i love meeting people yeah it's nice networking, <laughs> <people>. <laughs> yeah sometimes this stuff can get really heady or like yeah isolating yourself yeah you need to get out get out something else. see yeah. other stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah and so what would your advice be for younger starting out artists that are in the graffiti or street world street art world okay do you have any like advice or guidance like, in terms yeah of i'd say just so keep, keep going keep going that would be my advice like just yeah. to don't think about the huge picture yeah. just the tiny step a day step, yeah. like just get up in the morning and do one little thing yeah. and it'll trickle down to a tank of work but just do one thing a day yeah. and do something that's meaningful to you mm -hmm. and if you're going to take on a project realize that that's your life's work and mm -hmm. if it's going to take time to do then give it meaning and don't rush into something mm -hmm. and do things slowly and yeah. don't uh don't compare yourself to another to anybody else yeah because when you compare yourself yeah i think it's overwhelming it's unhappiness right yeah you start comparing yourself to... yeah you start to think like oh they did all this but they did all that over time or something mm -hmm. and it's not you can't compare yourself because we're all different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And where, since we're at the start of 2021, and I feel like we're slowly moving out of our coronavirus yes. crisis that we had all over the world, <laughs> where do you see your own career going in 2021? I, uh, what I'm, projects have you got planned? I'm painting a wall in like two weeks or as long as it gets, yeah. like if as long as it's 40 degrees. Yeah. And not 30 degrees because the paint will freeze after like four hours yeah but uh as long as it's capable <laughs> maybe <laughs> and so i've just painted this wall over here on bedford yeah and uh north six i think it is mm -hmm. to get people out to vote 
Oh, to both, yeah. Yeah, and it's like next to school, and I guess during the riots and the marches that we just had, uh, somebody went and bombed this guy's mural out from Australia. Oh, wow. So I had been walking by, and it was like that for like six months or seven months. So I went out and painted it. Okay. And uh, he got kind of pissed, but I was like, you're in Australia, you're not going to come back here. Yeah. When you do come back, you can have that wall, but I kind of inherit it for right now. Yeah. And we got people out to vote. Wow. We can put that behind us. That's amazing. I want to do something with poster and uh, Eno in like two weeks. Yeah. And just do something more street art yeah. oriented. Like just something nice yeah. that's not uh, so political. Definitely. Like just like a graph piece with posters, posters, street art, or his graffiti, yeah. Eno's graffiti, and yeah. then my graffiti. Okay. With like a nice backdrop. Yeah. So that'll be like in two weeks. Mm -hmm. The mural. Murals. Mm -hmm. Painting outside again, yeah. and then it's gonna get nice out. Line up some. Those things, yeah. I'm in this new area in Greenpoint, so yeah. I've seen like a wall over here because uh, I think Colossal Media. And all the, uh, like all the advertising yeah. companies, I guess they're not really doing that good right now. Okay. So all those advertising walls are freed up. Yeah. So I see like potential for a wall over here. Yeah. And I'm just uh, looking to paint outside again. Because okay. that's what uh, I enjoy the most. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, we always should be doing more of what we enjoy the most in life. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be nice to get outside again. Yeah, and for it to be warmer and things to open up slowly. So, yeah, I mean, everybody will be looking out for the next <laughs> that you have coming up. Yeah, so, it'll be, that's like that's a the work I look it. forward to doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I thank you so much for giving, for giving me and Arlet the opportunity to talk to you and get an thank insight you. on all your life and, you know, the way that you've developed as an artist and all the street art stories. I really appreciate that. It was so nice to speak to you. It was yeah. super nice to have you come by. Yeah. But also this studio here, we're gonna do an opening, have shows in here. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely have to tell me. <laughs> yeah, you're invited. Yeah, Everyone here you. is invited. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Sick. All right. Thank you, Lucky. Of course. So, so good to speak to you. Thanks for coming by. Yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Nice. <laughs>